Welcome everyone, Kostin here with a discussion about Age of Mythology Retold. And in this particular video, I want to talk about a number of things that Microsoft could do in order to improve the 1v1 multiplayer experience. Now, to be very clear on this, I think that it is fine if certain major gods or minor gods, certain units, certain playstyles don't work as well in 1v1 as they do in 2v2. Like you consider, you know, Thor, for instance, he may not necessarily be the best in 1v1, though he's capable of holding him his own. And I think like Thor is a great example on this. Like he's not the best in 1v1, he's not the worst, but he is actually really solid in team games for a number of reasons. But there are problems with the way the balancing works. And yes, this is accounting for the recent changes because there have been some improvements for Gaia and Ra in particular, but there are still plenty of problems over here. While Odin and Loki have been nerfed a bit, to be very clear on this, a bit, not as much as they necessarily need to, because Od Odin still has re a really powerful food benefits, scouting benefits, regeneration benefits and all that, and as well as a number of things that just make him really strong. So let's consider a couple of things that we should talk about. Well, I think it's probably best to actually start with the maps. And for this, I'm just going to jump into a skirmish map and let's just talk about this for a second about what's really going on over here. And I'm just gonna use a cheat to talk about the map design to an extent. So one of the problems, as it currently is, is if you look at this map when you start the game, and give, keeping in mind what we're talking about here, you see a situation over here. You have a gold mine, you have hunts, you have hurtables, you have berries, but the problem is, you will run out of resources in your initial base relatively quickly and then you are stuck in the position where you're either risking building a town center or village center Please. in a location next to another gold mine like over here and hunts like over here for instance that could be a strategy but that has a significant amount of resources or or you run out of resources and the, the problem with that is, of course, like you're on our resources, then you'll uh, get ahead of you, especially because huntables are much better than anything. It's like they're better than berries, they're better than herdables without an upgrade, and that is a bit of a problem. I think the removal of hunting dogs, while I understand it perfectly well, I think the removal of hunting dogs has made the situation where huntables are just much, much better. Because in order to make uh, farms effective, you do need to invest a lot in it. And farms are still gonna be behind what you can get from hunts. So maybe that is something to consider. But the problem is the lack of ability to defend, to be sure. Even if you build like, say, an, you know, an expansion over here, right? A, a town center, even if I'm building a town center, uh, you know, next to a gold mine, for instance, close enough, the distance is such that you can't really work it. Now, I imagine this is one of you the reasons to. they added the village, uh, the village center that you can use to be sure. And that can be a benefit, but keep in mind village, they're not as durable as regular town centers. And you gotta ask yourself, is it worth it to invest all that resources just to defend one gold mine? Certainly it's not worth it for a hunt. But what about goldmine? You can say what you want about Age of Empires 2. This did not happen in Age of Empires 2. So I think like we need more resources. Like you can have a goldmine closer to your base. One a bit further away. Not this far though. Like, and this is by the way fairly common on virtually every map. We need those resources closer. Because if you don't have them closer. What that is incentivizing from my perspective is the current meta which is all about raiding map control uh you know that situation you can't really play defensively in building walls like i look at you know top tier games i look at people playing on the ladder i see replays very very few people build walls now i certainly don't want an age of empire suit situation where people would just make these freaking fortress bases that would be a nightmare to deal with or you would just build a wall around an entire area. I don't think that's necessarily great. But at the same time, you have that you have exposure 
you have limited resources so you either can compete for those resources or you're going to lose and that is the root cause for so many other issues that do exist in the game because if you're if everyone's focused on early game aggression and map control and pushing your their opponent into a defensive situation where they can't gather those resources then a lot of major gods minor gods even entire civilizations are going to end up suffering because of it like this is one of the problems of Ra. i mean beyond the issues that Ra had and still has for the record like oh we got we now get berry bushes right we now uh, we now get berry bushes with uh, a berry bush benefit though people have pointed this out that it's like oh great we get now can use berry bushes so that's even less reason to use rain so his god power is useless basically for 1v1 games that was, but yeah, the map design itself, I feel, is contributing a great deal to it. Maybe the cost of town centers, all that kind of stuff. You know, just various factors to take into consideration. Also, another problem is like the regen, the innate regeneration, like Odin can get, or the healing certain, um, certain civilizations can either get, or certain major gods can get, and others can't, or minor gods. That is absolutely something contributing to it. Because if you know you have healing, and you know your units can heal, that hit and run strategy works much better. Because you, you can take a lot of damage on your units and just pull them back, re, uh, regenerate the HP they've lost. That is one of the reasons it does work so well. Beyond that, yes, beyond that problem uh, with respect to it, we got to talk about God Powers. And then we can talk about myth units and various minor gods. But the important thing I think should be stressed out is the aspect of god powers. Because all too often, what can happen right now, one of the reasons Odin dominates the meta, so to speak. Well, Odin or Poseidon. You look at Odin, though. I want to use this as an example. Because there's a situation with Odin. Beyond his incredible ability of controlling the map early on, because, you know, Valkyries, Cavalry... A hunting capability even if you're put down the defensive as Odin and keep in mind it's harder to do so than many other gods that's fine because as Odin you can be like okay I'll accept that I get more hunts than you sure I might not have gold and all that but then when you're playing as Odin you can just get Njord in tier 3 and that is ridiculous ridiculously powerful so we need to talk about that kind of balancing because you get the Walking Woods, which are good against buildings. You get Mountain Giants, which are good against buildings. You get Jotuns that are good against everything except enemy heroes. You get the Jarl benefit, all combined. And this is not just one particular situation, right? This is probably one of the more extreme examples, if not the most extreme examples. But that is absolutely a problem. So you do have that kind of situation where certain minor gods give you such a significant power boost because you do get that free mountain giant to begin with that is a power boost in itself you do get that god power utilization and that becomes a real issue like how certain minor gods give you such a power boost the moment you finish getting them now sure there's all kinds of rebalancing that i feel should happen in regards to the minor gods but this leads into the next point god powers they nerfed Ragnarok, and I'm sure that at one point they're going to nerf Walking Woods to some extent. The issue, however, is a more fundamental one. As long as you have God powers that give you an incredible level of power, the moment you get to that age, and others don't, that means that the flexibility and the choices that you have with Minor Gods just kind of disappear. Like, if you're playing in 1v1 as Odin, you almost won't always want to go with Walking Woods, as an example. If you're playing as Freyr, it's a different discussion, but given the vulnerability of the Nidhogg, you know, in a longer game, absolutely, Hell would be worth it, you know, the myth unit upgrades. But Inferno can win you the game. Ragnarok can win you the game. And this just keeps happening. Like, there are situations, like Meteor, for instance, or maybe Sign of Osiris in a more limited sense, or Earthquake. These things are happening quite a bit right now, you know, or curse for Aphrodite. So I think with respect to the god powers, what we need to see a situation is that you don't just instantly get to an age and you in instantly have that level of power. 
Now, how exactly that could be fixed, I'm not sure. You know, we could talk about cooldowns, maybe some favor cost initially, or uh, just having God powers initially weak, but not completely. I would not want to see a permanent nerf, because then you would have the opposite situa situation where, especially because of the cost of God powers, you would not want to use them necessarily, right? Uh, except the, that one free time. I think, however, that some level of scalability, you know, it could be game duration, it could be the age you're in, then we talk about the age 4 god powers and all that. You know, maybe the age 4 god powers don't instantly become strong, you know, maybe there's some upgrade you need to research. I know something, however, should be done to prevent the situation of like, oh, I just got to age 3, I instantly get an enormous level of power right off the bat the moment I do so. The free myth unit, the god power, and then very quickly you'll start getting upgrades as well. Within just a minute, two minutes, all that. That gives you a significant combat power. That is one of the reasons why you see a lot of games ending in H3. Because there are many gods that do give you such a power boost that you can do it. And it's difficult. Like, unless you also get that kind of power boost or you're close to it. Even then, you run into the balance issue where certain major gods have access to it. And others don't. Like, you know, I'll give you another, <laughs> the perfect example. Consider Ra versus Njort, right? What Ra has. He has either Sobek or Sekhmet. Now, you know, it's kind of funny. People are complaining, like, oh, someone left a comment. People are complaining about Ancestors. Ancestors isn't the problem. But Locust Swarm or Citadel versus, and a Scarab, Brock, and Laser Croc versus uh, even Frost? There's no discussion on it. What's the level of power? Or bronze, for instance, that is available. That's, uh, that's just an example. Or even for the Egyptians purely, you know, ancestors versus locust swarm. Again, not a competition. So even if you are trading blows in 1v1, even if... And this is the problem. Even if you're in a good game where... Things are balanced, you're fighting each other, you're contesting map control. The game might be over just because of a minor god decision in H3. Depend on the availability. And that the moment it becomes available, you might be screwed. If you don't have that kind of ability or if you make the wrong choice. Now sure, make the wrong choices about your own playstyle. And you know, some of the issues in multiplayer right now, I do think that they're going to resolve themselves as people get more comfortable playing the game, as people learn the game, as people understand how things are going to work. I mean, I'm from my experience, you know, I, I'm realizing I need to do things different. So that's going to happen naturally, but there are, from my point of view at the very least, inherent problems. So that is uh, something to be discussed as well. So map design, uh, map design, instantaneous power, minor gods, the balancing of those minor gods as well, and yes, the balancing of the major gods. An a final thing to mention here, and an idea that people have put forward online, is what if we every single major god had all the minor gods available? You can could, you could make that decision. People would say, oh, but they would just push people to make the same decision over and over again. I don't think so, really. Like, at the moment, I would actually say, like, yes, some decisions would not be viable, to be sure, like, you know, Fa, who the hell would pick Fa for, uh, for Egyptians as opposed to Anubis. But that, you know, that is a discussion that is a balancing discussion that should be had. But part of the problem right now and why people always pick the same god is they know it's much better than something else. It would not change that, but I think it would help out with a lot of inherent weaknesses you know, if, you know, say for instance, as Ra, you could have Anubis, or if you could have Sekhmet, which would be a pretty big deal. Now, it, it, you would have to t rebalance the minor gods as well, of course, you can just do it like that, but I think, and uh, like some people will talk about, oh, it would just make every match the same. I disagree. I think it would actually add more choice, because, you know, if you're going with Sign of Osiris as opposed to Meteor, that's a different discussion. Or, you know, if you're going with Horus, again, different discussion, different playstyle, different focus. And I think it would add a lot more variety from my perspective, because you would have a lot more variety, you know, in every age. And then how all of that would add up, that would significantly change the game. That is my perspective on this. 
I'm sure many people will disagree with this. Let me know what you guys think about this. It's just some ideas I have in my head on the subject. I'm by no means an expert right now. Right now. I'm just someone who looks at the stats, looks at what's happening, looks at how the game is being played, looks at the match uh, length and all that. I'm not going to claim I'm a multiplayer pro. Cosine signing out. Stay tuned for more.